Hey everyone, welcome to Nicole's Needlework. Today is Friday, May 21st, and it's right around 11 a.m. This is episode 101, and this is a video podcast about stitching, knitting, and beginner quilting. Um, I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry at Nicole's Needlework, and show notes can be on my can be found on my blog, Nicole'sNeedlework.com. And I got ginger hair. <laughs> laying on our heated blanket, even though it's pretty warm out right now. It has been um, beautiful here in South Carolina. I'm really enjoying the spring this year. Um, so I wanted to do another quick video just to do the giveaway um, from last week and to share a little bit of what I've been working on. So I don't have a lot of stitching. Um, just a little bit. I worked a tiny bit. I've got this in my bag I made, which I love. Um, and I worked on the floral motif sampler by the Scarlet House. And here is my little progress right there. So I got this one done, a couple of these, and then I started working on that. And I'm just kind of working on the border as I go. And this is 36 count prairie grass by Seraphim. So I'm enjoying that. And I'm using all the called for threads. Most of them are gentle arts and there's one weak style works that white. white wash. So I am still completely obsessed with sewing and um, everything quilting. I'm just, it's, it's so crazy because I'll like, I'll go to sleep thinking about it. I'll be dreaming about it. I'll wake up thinking about it. So yeah, it's a complete obsession right now. Um, I'm sure it'll die down a little bit eventually, but right now it's just all consuming this whole quilting thing. So um, over the weekend, I was kind of looking at um, getting a Singer Featherweight. And I was looking on eBay and the ones that were priced pretty reasonable needed a lot of work. Um, so I was looking, I told my mom what I was looking for and she told me to check Craigslist and I did. And there was one on there that was priced pretty good and looked like it was in really good shape. So I messaged them Monday morning to see if it was available. They said yes. And I said, when can we meet? And they said 2 p.m. So I went up to near Greensboro, North Carolina, about an hour and a half away and picked it up. And I'm so, so happy with it. Um, it's a featherweight, but it's heavy. <laughs> so it is a 1951, and it's the Centennial Edition. So on that little emblem there, it says 1851 to 1951. And um, it's, it's in really good shape. And the, the person selling it said it had just been serviced recently, and you could definitely tell um, it's just, it's been a um, dream to sew on it. I was having trouble with some seams and it just zips right through them. And I love it so much that I ended up returning my other sewing machine. I was just having so many issues, um, not only with the seams, but with it dragging my fabric under the like feed dogs. And I, I, I once I started using this, I'm like, I have no need for any other machine. Maybe in the future I will, but as far as right now, it's perfect. So one reason why it was so easy for me to get going on the on my Featherweight Singer was um, I actually learned how to sew on a vintage Singer. My mom had one and she had a bigger model, um, but it was virtually the same. Um, how you thread it, uh, how you wind the bobbin, and so I insert the bobbin, everything just came right back to me, even though it was 
probably close to 40 years ago that I learned. Um, I was probably maybe eight or nine um, when she taught me how to sew. So it was it was really neat having all those memories come right back. So anyway, and I told my mom that and she was so happy that, um, you know, she had taught me that and I had those memories of us sewing together when I was a little girl. So, um, so I'm so happy. My mom said to name her, I should name her Ollie after my great grandmother, Olive. So they called her Ollie for short. So that's Ollie. <laughs> and um, the case came with, it's actually in pretty good condition. Um, got a few scuffs, but I mean, from, for being 70 years old, it's not too bad. Both, both latches work. Sorry, that was loud. Um, it's, it's definitely got the vintage smell. Um, it came with some feet and I had to Google what they were. So this is a to sew on um, bias tape. It's got thread wrapped around it. So this is like a, you put your bias tape in that hole and it just creates it and sews it at the same time. Um, I think this is a ruffler to make ruffles. This is a um, hemmer, so it creates a hem and you, you can adjust how big you want your hem with this. So yeah, it's kind of neat to Google and this is, this does gathers, this one. So I, it came with the original um, presser foot and I ordered a couple more. I ordered a zipper foot and I ordered the um, um, attachment so you can use regular like feet, like from the brother, because I had ordered a couple um, from the brother. And then it has the original manual. Oops, upside down. Um, but you can also get this online, but yeah, so, so cool. So I'm very, very, very happy with that. Um, and for like quarter inch seams, I've just been putting washi tape and putting the seam so easy on there and it's been working out great. So very, very happy with that. Did I mention that? I'm very happy with that. <laughs> so I set up a table in here um, to sew and I have the ironing board and everything. Uh, I got, I just got a inexpensive, uh, desk at Ikea. They finally had the legs in stock, like all through COVID they were out of legs for these tabletops. All right. So I'll share a little bit of the quilting I've been working on. And then, um, I got a little bit of quilting stash and then I'll go ahead and do the giveaway. So I got back out the layer cake lollies. Quilt. And that was the second one I started after I finished my first quilt. So that's the one I was like having issues with. Um, the one where I got two different whites and it was just a mess. But I got quite a few squares done. I'm back on track. I did find a, I just needed a charm pack of the Shine On fabric by um, Bonnie and Camille. So these are the blocks. I've gotten finished. I'll just show real quick, like the setup of how one big block will look. So here's an example of how one of the big blocks is going to look once it's all sewn together. So it's gonna be a really cute, fun, vintagey quilt. Um, so I just need to get back to that. But I mean, it was a good learning experience to figure out the whites and cutting and really measuring and accuracy. And I used to work at a cash office in a grocery store and we always, um, we always said accuracy before speed. You know, it's just, it's just important. And I was trying to rush it and um, realized it wasn't gonna work. So it was a good learning lesson. But yeah, I've got all my, so these are like my A fabrics, my um, 
B and C, my D. So they're all kind of put away in this. Uh, I've just been keeping it in one of these plastic shoe boxes. So then the other one I've been working on is the um, windmill quilt. And that is, so this layer, this is Layer Cake Lollies by the Fat Quarter Shop. And it's a free pattern on their website. And then the windmill quilt um, is also a free pattern and it's by Material Girl Quilts. And um, so this is one I'm working on. This is, this block needs to be sewed together. I have all the rows done. But I have 11 done now. There's one. Um, so almost 12. So I'm a little over halfway done because you need 20 of these big blocks. So I'm not going to show you all, show you them all, but my husband's like, I really like this one. I'm like, okay, <laughs> which is cute because it's all florals and pinks and um, everything, but I'm glad he likes it. So I ended up ordering backing for this um, and I'm hoping, you know, to get it done maybe next week or in a couple weeks and then I can um, have it quilted. So that would be exciting, my second quilt. And then here's the rest of the squares I need to sew together. So then um, I got, so on the way to get um, the sewing machine, my one of my favorite quilt stores in the Charlotte area is We're So Creative. And I had to stop by there to get some uh, border fabric. So I got this jelly roll on um, Etsy. And it's Bloomington by um, Lella Boutique. And her name is Vanessa Gortson. She is the designer of Lella Boutique. She has quilt patterns. She has some books. Um, she has a great blog. And I really want to do this. This is the jelly filled. Whoops. Whoops. Stop swelling. Jelly filled book. So it's all jelly roll quilts. And I really want to do this one, parfait. So I got the jelly roll. And then, um,. I decided to kind of copy what she did and do kind of a pink border. So I went to We're So Creative and I got some of this pink stripe to use for the border. It's gonna be so cute. And that's also from Bloomington. And then this charcoal with a little pink dot in the middle for the binding. So that'll go, it's gonna be pretty, I think. And then um, I'm just using um, the Moda Bella solids in the bleached white. Number 98, not number 97 um, for the backing, or background, not backing. I might also use it for backing too. Not this, but a different. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna, <laughs> It will be pretty. I love those colors. So that's for one project. And then um, I have thread all over me. And then I also got um, just a half yard of this Sunday Stroll by Bonnie and Camille. It's their, one of their new fabric lines to make a project bag. And I thought I could just use the same pink that I used for the other project bags for the lining. And then while I was there, I saw this jelly roll. 
and um, I picked it up and it is French General, it's kind of, and it's La Rose Rouge. It's so pretty, it's a little hard to see, all wrapped up. Very, very pretty. I love French General. So I thought I could use um, this fabric I used for my first quilt because I had a lot left over. And I'm thinking of making, so I was thinking of maybe doing this one. It's called Jelly Roll Twist and it is a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, it just looks like a fun but simple pattern that would really show off the fabric. So that's what I was thinking of doing with that jelly roll. And then it calls for, you know, five inch squares. I was thinking of using this for the five inch squares. And then I ordered um, some binding in the red, in one of the reds in here. So I think that'll be really pretty. So that's another project kind of lined up there. We are growing fast. Um, let me see, what else do I have to share? I think, I think that might be everything. Um, I've just been really working on that windmill quilt the most. Um, and um, I think that's it. So I'll go ahead and do the giveaway. Um, so the first one is gonna be Great Granny Square by Lori Holt. This is such a cute book. And speaking of Lori, I haven't worked on any um, of my red blocks, but I really wanna work on some this week. So I've already put in Granny. Let me get the comments. And 219 comments. And let me go ahead and start. And the winner is Sandra McGinnis. And she says, I have been looking for the great granny book. Great videos, fingers crossed, thanks very much. So Sandra, I'm gonna put a comment on your comment and just send me an email with your mailing address. Next one is Farm Girl Vintage 2 by Lori. This is so cute. I just love everything in there. Um, and the keyword was farm girl. All right, so there was 98 entries for that. And let me And Christine Heavener is the winner for that one. And she said, new to your channel, nice to see similar projects that I'm also working on. Farm girl and granny would be nice to have. So Christine Hevener, um, I will put a comment on your comment and send me your mailing address and I'll get this out. So all the giveaway prizes um, from last week have been mailed out and all the Duck Derby prizes have been mailed out. And um, so you guys should be receiving those soon. Just wanna say thanks again for all your donations. Um, we're having our virtual hangout, I think next week. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, so I think that's it. Um, I'll probably do another video probably in a couple weeks. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.